For any villains we may meet, we haven't any fears. Paramount will protect us, because we're signed for five more years. Road to Morocco. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hole. And I'm Lee Esses. We're protected. Yay! <laughs> this episode, we're going to be talking about a trope that is just fun to make fun of. Yes. Plot armor. This is something we see more often with prequels and with TV shows. We don't often see it with movies as much. Plot armor is literally something that protects your main characters because they can't die because they're the main characters. There's no risk to these characters at all. Harry Potter has pretty solid plot armor through the first six books and the first half of the seventh because, well, it's Harry Potter and. I would have been more than happy if the last book would have been Hermione Granger and the Deathly Hollows. If it had been Hermione Granger, it wouldn't have been the Deathly Hollows. It would have been Hermione Granger and the, let's get rid of these horcruxes. Yes! There are also authors on the flip side of this, where there is no such thing as plot armor. George R. R. Martin, no character is safe. And he is very famous for that. There is a danger to having the no one is safe, and I'll just kill somebody on a whim because it feels like a Tuesday. And that is your audience is less likely to get really invested in any of the characters because they know they're going to die soon. But you definitely cannot accuse Martin of plot armor in any way. I also have to chuckle at the Star Wars prequels. Padme had zero plot armor. Perfectly healthy at the end of the story, but she's not in the original, so I guess I'll die? We like to make fun of this, but it is a serious problem that you have to find a balance with. Plot armor is going to be a thing, but you don't have to take it all the way to George R.R. R. Martin status to level out the trope. Another thing that kind of is both Martin and plot armor would be Star Trek. So if I were wearing a red shirt and I were a face you'd never seen before, going on an away mission with captain and first officer, you know exactly what's going to happen to me. But we also know captain and first officer are going to survive. And that's kind of why I'm saying it's both plot armor and the opposite of plot armor. If you want to take this in context of the same character has both plot armor and no armor, Supernatural where your characters die all the time. There's one episode where one character dies over and over and over and over again. Every day for two years, this character dies. So yeah, they're dying all the time, but they're still protected by the plot. They're still the main character. There's going to be a way to bring them back. And if it's been announced that there's another season to whatever TV show, you can be pretty convinced that Castle is going to survive being kidnapped by the psychopath because there are still three more seasons of Castle. Like our quote at the beginning said, because we're signed for five more years. So there's a little piece of plot armor that protects the villains, and it is made fun of all the time. It's called the villain monologue. The villain has motivations. And it's extra amusing when the villain's like, I'm not going to kill you. I want to tell you my entire plan instead. And I want you to be miserable tied to this chair while I just vomit information at you. So for those very short few minutes, the villain is protected because there needs to be an explanation to the reader or viewer that this is why the villain's doing all of this. But at the same time, that monologue also protects the main character because it gives them the chance to get out of capture and kill the villain. The fact that villains protect their heroes. Okay, you can kill all of the other Avengers. Don't kill Captain America. He's mine. If everyone else dies, fine, but we know that he's safe. We know that he's going to win. There's no actual fear for this character. So if you're writing a villain... Be very, very careful about the monologue. Please don't let that be your character's plot armor because it is an absolutely overused and boring trope. And how often have you seen a villain on the cusp of success and he doesn't kill the good guy? 
because they want to monologue or whatever. How many of the villain's issues would be solved if he just pulled a gun, popped James Bond, and was on his way? Voldemort had this problem. He was fighting a teenager, but no, he had to go on his rant. But I'm not going to just kill you. You're a teenage boy. I'm going to make you fight me. I'm going to give you back a wand, and we're going to duel this like amazing men. <laughs> and how did that end for him? <laughs> yeah, why, why not just... If you just taken Harry Potter, instead of using this elaborate, unforgivable curse, just taken the infant and then, like, dropped him out a window. <laughs> Turns out... Babies don't survive falls. Problem solved. But no, his ego got in the way. Yes, sometimes you can have a villain that's super narcissistic that's going to fall into this. But be careful, because people will make fun of it, just like people make fun of Voldemort for not just dropping a baby out a window. If you find yourself asking why the villain doesn't do this, even if you already have the answer because he's your villain, he's your character, whatever. If you as a reader find yourself asking, well, why doesn't he just cap him and be done? Your audience is definitely going to be asking that also. What are some other ways to spot plot armor? The main thing about plot armor is we don't fear for the main character. That's the issue that we have. And a way to tell that is if the sidekicks are absolutely useless. They're just kind of there for comedic relief, maybe. So there has to be purpose for the sidekicks to be involved. If your main character is the only person that can come up with the solution to the end, they have some serious plot armor going on there. You definitely want them reliant on their allies. And that should be your secret ingredient that gets them to finally conquer the villain in the end. Another way to recognize it is, do they save themselves from a situation that should have and would have killed them had they not been your main character? So if they're running through the hail of bullets, you literally have plot armor. It's just protecting you there. It's a wonderful little force field that can bend bullets away from you. Okay, if it's stormtroopers on the other side, it makes sense. But if it's anyone else on the main side... Stormtroopers' lack of aim is plot armor because they were supposed to be the best sharpshooters in the Empire. But somehow they still miss everyone. And that is a beautiful example of why it's called plot armor. Another way to spot it is a little bit back to that deus ex machina. Is there some kind of divine protection that swoops in and stops them from dying? It should be your main character's skills and the skills of their allies that gets them out of problems. It should be a struggle. So aside from making your character struggle, what are some other ways to fix plot armor? Make sure there is a cost to whatever it is to succeed. Them being a hero, them saving the day, still cost New York City $540 million to repair. Defeating Voldemort at the Battle of Hogwarts still cost dozens of lives. And characters that we care about. Another way you could fix if you notice that your character has plot armor, take him out of commission for a while. Let the sidekick step up. Green Arrow's bow is broken and he's been arrested. So now all of the other characters, he is dependent on them to get him out of jail, fix his bow, and move on. Another way is you have to have an in-universe explanation for surviving. Not just a divine intervention button or a because magic. It has to be real, understandable, and explained. So Luke has force powers enough to push the stormtrooper bullets away from him. Or that force intuition that allows him to block those beams with his lightsaber. It's not just the stormtroopers have bad aim, conveniently only when the main characters are on screen. Back to my Voldemort example. In the fourth book, Goblet of Fire, where they're dueling and they have that wand connection. The in-world explanation for this is that Harry has a piece of Voldemort in him with the Horcrux. Voldemort has a piece of Harry in him through the blood that helped bring back a body. And then their wands have a shared core. So they have these deep connections that that's the only reason why Expelliarmus was able to block Avada Kedavra. 
But that's the thing. It's an in-world explanation that even though it's kind of vague and like, okay, it still makes sense in the context of the magic that we know. Another thing you can do to make it feel like the character doesn't have plot armor, even if they kind of do need to survive to move on to conquer the bad guy, is to give the audience information that is protecting this character who's running through the hail of bullets. Even if the main character doesn't know, the audience should know. They can name what is protecting your hero. And another great and final way to fix your plot armor problems, murder. Murder. Just kill someone. May not be your main character, but it could be an important side character that your readers thought was going to be essential for the ending. This makes it feel like there is danger in the world. This could happen just as easily to your main character. Even though your readers may know that your main character is going to make it through, even though there's always going to be a slight element of plot armor, there are still ways you can minimize that. Make them hurt. Make them struggle. Make it difficult. That's what adds suspense that keeps the reader going. As you're consuming stories, you'll start to recognize, I don't fear for this character. They have plot armor. And it becomes less satisfying. Even as you're writing a story, make sure it's satisfying. Make sure it's terrifying. Make sure your audience has no fingernails left. Embrace your maniacal side. Embrace that as you write. And then always write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 